good more, morning. More. more, more. more. <laughs> Liverpool legend John Barnes yeah. in the studio to talk about the Singapore Festival of Football happening on the 26th of July, the 30th of July, as well as the 2nd of August. First, there's the Tiger Cup. Liverpool's not involved in that. Mm-hmm. Spurs versus Roma. The Standard Chartered Trophy. That's where Liverpool comes in. Liverpool versus Leicester. And, of course, the Singapore Trophy presented by Audi as well as Standard Chartered. That's Liverpool versus Bayern Munich. Yeah, and this is all for the Singapore Festival of Football driven by Comfort Delgro. Tickets are on sale on from the 22nd of May at 10 a.m. on Ticketek. They start at $99. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be so exciting. Right, John? It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. One of the greatest footballers of all time, everybody. Give I him a big so. round of applause. I think so. So, first One of the greatest first. footballers of all time who happens to be here at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm the only one you could get. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you feeling this morning? I'm good. I don't, I don't sleep wherever I am. I've been traveling a lot in the last few years, so therefore I, I have jet lag wherever I am. So I just don't sleep. Okay. So if, you, if you want to get me here earlier, you can, because I'm awake all the time. <laughs> Good grief. I'm like a vampire. <laughs> I just want to say, John, uh, when, when, when you were playing for uh, Watford, you gave me goosebumps. When you were playing for <laughs> Liverpool, you gave me even more goosebumps. Down the left flank, solid. Yeah. You're effective both, uh, uh, I mean, you play with, with your left and your right leg. Some people, some people just, uh, they're stronger on their on left. On one side, yeah. You know, when they're, uh, but you used to go down the left flank and score with your right do you remember then if I gave you goosebumps when I played for Watford when Everton beat us in the cup final in 1984? Yes. I think that's why you brought that up. Because <laughs> I know you're an Evertonian. <laughs> well, you were, te- you were telling us there's a difference between an Everton fan and yeah, an Evertonian, Everton fan, right? Because he's a, look at him. He's, I'm only, he, I don't know. Well, you should be able to see him. He's a very nice man. He looks nice and he's got a nice personality. I'm so the that's, he's, that's why he's not an Evertonian. I'm the nicest. <laughs> <laughs> not with a nice face right. and a nice personality. Yeah. You, can't, you just think you are. <laughs> but but Anyway, I just want to say mm, this again sure. before, and, and I, I, I won't say it again, <laughs> right, because I'm, in, I'm an Evertonian. There are How many times have you said that? Then? I will never say this again. My brother-in-law, <laughs> says, my brother-in-law's an Evertonian. He says, I'm never going to watch them ever again. <laughs> <laughs> there are only four Liverpool players that, gives, get, that, give, that will give me goosebumps. Okay. In fact, I'm overwhelmed now because... You're starstruck, are you? Yeah, yes, can, I am. We can't can't three. Three. I, I don't get starstruck very yeah. easily, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. So it's just you, John. Yes. If I get to meet Graham Souness, yeah. I'll, okay. I'll, you know, I'll be overwhelmed as well. Bruce Grabala and Ian Rush. Ian Rush. Wow. What about Kenny Dalglish? And Kenny Delphi. Oh, That's wow, five. so That's five. five. See, Everton is going to know their see, own mind. See, you can almost be a Liverpool and fan. And, <laughs> and, you're giving, this, and you're giving your age away as well. This, is, this is one of the few areas where I can actually come up against Glenn and go, I can go one better because I've actually met Kenny Delphi. Oh, show off. That's <laughs> very great. I met him at the National Stadium. I actually have... Everton weren't playing, it's okay. I ha- <laughs> yeah, they weren't. I actually have a Liverpool windbreaker that's signed by Kenny Nice. Yeah, that's, that's nice. That's special. Okay. Special. You know, John Barnes has got... Uh, uh, has scored some amazing goals yeah. against my Neville Southall. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a good goalkeeper, actually. Everybody loves Neville. He's a fantastic goalkeeper. He was mm. a hard goalkeeper. Of course, you do remember when Everton were, that's probably why, because, of course, in the 80s, um, Everton and Liverpool were the two best teams. Everton won the league twice. We yep. won it four times. So of yeah. course, and all of these young people who think the rivalry is either Manchester United or you know Arsenal or Manchester City now, when you were in your prime, I would say, 84, 85. Is that yeah. when you're in your prime? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're in your prime now? You would remember. You would remember that Everton were... That's probably why you started supporting them. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. And you can't change because I've heard you've changed. Oh, quite, no, 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 quite no, 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 a number yeah, of times. Quite a number, quite quite a number of times. times. That's okay, all of course, you can't yes. change your club. Once you stick with it, you got to stick with the club. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Loyalty is very important. That, that's yeah, yeah, we keep, keep going, John. Him, we yeah. need this. Keep <laughs> going, keep going. Let's continue to talk to John on the Big Show TV. It is Wednesday, the 17th. Of May. Kiss 92 date check brought to you by Gain City Megastore at Sungai Kadut's 8th anniversary sale. Expect from the Singapore Festival of Football. Exactly what you just, a festival of football. The quality is going to be fantastic. The fans are going to be overwhelmed because the clubs coming in for the quality of the clubs. Of course, there's Liverpool. No yeah. Everton, unfortunately, but maybe next time. <laughs> you know, you've got Bayern Munich, you've got Roma, you've got Leicester. Yeah. You know, so um, it's, 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 it's going to be fantastic quality because, of course, preseason. In my day, it was about, and we've come here many times mm-hmm. preseason. It's about coming out and maybe going out and getting drunk and having fun. Mm. Whereas preseason now is preparing for the big game, for, for, for the season, which means that they take it very seriously. So, you know, fans coming can expect 
a match like if they're playing in the Champions League or the Premier League because you know it be all the top players, yeah, big squads. Uh, and Liverpool are, are, are last year it was a, it was a flying visit came in mm. for one two days which yeah. is an ideal so they'll be also interacting with fans you're here for five days you know so not only is it going to be football but it's going to be lots of interaction and community work with the fans as well that's nice that's going to be nice for any football fan yeah I think so and you know if you guys want to get your tickets remember the, na- the name to remember is Ticketek okay yeah. that's where you're going to get your tickets from 22nd of May 22nd of May they go up so that's going to be really really interesting uh, it's interesting that you say you know they take it so seriously it's got to be a big worry for clubs when they come out here and they're going to they're going to be playing games like this. They they're pre- prepping for a season, but they're worried about injuries, surely. Well, of course, you can get injured any time. You can get injured during the season. Yeah. You know, so the fact that it's pre-season is neither here nor there. What you would actually see probably pre-season is whereby they would rotate a lot of the players. Ah. But in terms mm. of the intensity of the game, yes. Yeah. You know, they're not just going to f- Flock the players it's not to a death. Away it's not game. just eleven yeah. people being put on the pitch. Right, You've got right. a big squad. Yep. But in terms of the intensity of the games, as much as you may see more changes than you would do in a Premier League match, where you may make two or three, the intensity of the games will be the same because the players also have to get fit. Uh, and as far as injuries go, you can't legislate for injuries. Yeah. You know, and especially if you feel that you're not going to go into a tackle. So in case you get injured and you don't go into a tackle properly, that's when you're likely to get injured. So right. you have to play at full pelt all the time. Mm. Yeah, speaking of the squad, you know, you 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 had you played with a great squad in the eighties and nineties. How do you compare this squad to to what you? The well, squad you can't you, compare squads now than back then because, of course, I'll go back to a little bit before my time and maybe even three or four years at Liverpool, where Liverpool yeah. won the league mm. using fourteen players. Yeah. For the whole season. Yeah. Whereas now, with the size of the squads and the quality of the squads, which means that I think any Liverpool team or any great team of the past, their best 11 could compete with any team even now. However, Liverpool can change the whole 11 now and still have international players, whereas teams of the past couldn't. So the squads now are much bigger and much stronger. Right, right, yeah. right. And yet they seemed burnt out. Liverpool. Yeah, what say, is that? Well, I would say that they're burnt out. I think not only talking about this particular season, not generally speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, this particular season, we had um, a bit of a transitional period in terms of the age of the players because, of course, a lot of the players that were in their prime were aged between 29 and 31. Yeah. And what yeah. you have to do then, you have to then change that. And you could have changed it. They could have kept that same team for another year, but they would have had to have changed it at a particular time. But because they had the opportunities to bring in the, the Diazes and the Nuneses and the Gakpos who are in their early 20s and the Harvey Elliotts, meant that with these young players coming in, you're probably going to go through a transitional period of play, showing a bit of inconsistency, allied with the, the horrendous injury situation we had. But mm-hmm. you can see in the last six or seven games how consistent yeah. we've been, which because, means next yeah, year yeah. I, have no, I have no fears about next year. So it's been a bit of a transitional period, but the fans still love the club and they still trust the club. They still trust Jürgen. Um, so there hasn't been any, any murmurings of discontent. Right. Do you think they're going to leapfrog Man United? Well, I, 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 I believe that we will win our matches. But as a Liverpool fan, we would like to hope that Man United and Newcastle drop points, but we have no control over that. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I would say, yes, Man United are going to lose or Newcastle are going to lose, but I don't know. Yeah. What I do think I know is that we will win our matches, but as to what happens. But, you know, if we don't qualify for the Champions League, I'm very positive that next season, with what we've done in the last six or seven matches, um, and the new players we've brought in who are now becoming acclimatized to Liverpool will put on a much better showing next year. I've always wanted to ask a, 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 a Liverpool body this. What effect did Mane leave have on the club? Well, we'll never, we can never tell. Because we, but what we do know is while he was here, he was a fantastic player. Yeah. But, you know, in modern football now, what actually happens is players come, players go. Mm. You know? mm. um, and, of course, we had a, a situation whereby I think that they prioritized most things. So mm. of that happened. So, and, and once again, Mane's coming into 30, 31. He's looking yeah. for a move somewhere else. So, you know... Uh, and it hasn't actually worked out for me. No, it hasn't, so it hasn't really, actually yeah. worked out. So, yeah. you know, what I say to Liverpool fans is we really support the clubs and we love the players while they're here. And while they're here, we demand the players give 100% effort, commitment, determination. So is, the, is that the main difference that you would see in football now and then? That people are changing a lot more, the turnover is a lot more? Well, absolutely, because every Jan- and that's what the fans demand. Come January, the fans say, let's sign some players. And then come the end of the season, let's sign some more players. And then come January, let's sign some more players. So, mm. And that's not necessarily the key to success. Mm. As Chelsea have proven. Send them 700 million pounds and they bought in 15 players, and that's yep. what we're saying. That's what we should do. But look what happened to them. So, mm. having that's the Frank Lampard's important. fault. Well, <laughs> Frank did buy all these players and spend that money, but you know, and then trying to manage those players is, is, is a problem. And yeah. we know that Jurgen doesn't particularly like big squads of old superstar players. So, you know, and he, he's been successful in the past, and I'm sure he'll, he'll continue that way. So, I'm always urging the fans to resist this, this, this philosophy of, you know, every January, let's sign players Someone and let's new. sign more mm. players. That, you know, you need to blend them properly.
Mm. I've always had this worry with English football and the number of foreign players coming into English football, how it affects the English game, meaning the English national squad. I think it did for a while, I would say probably about 10 years ago. But then if you look at the young, well, not young anymore, the Raheem Sterling era, mm -hmm. whereby what happened was you then had a lot of foreign players coming into the top clubs. Yeah. But then... I would say about six, seven years ago, a lot of the, the, the English clubs then started to sign young English players. So I suppose you can look at the, the players who've actually come through um, of the Sterling era, who may be now 27, 28, but they started when they were 18, 19. So the national team is, is, is stronger. And of course, now they've got good young English players. So they're, mm. I think they've got the blend, probably not 100% right, because I still think the English players should be given more of an opportunity. But I think they're much better than they were when the Premier League first started of just signing all foreign players. Would you agree with the system where, say, uh, like the, like some of the countries in Europe, where you can have all these foreign players, but you can only play X number per time? I don't know which European club. I can't remember anymore. where it was I, I read. Think, where, where yeah. they, well, but is that a system but, but, but that would it work? Is, what it is, it, it is a system that, that would help the national team, but yeah. would not help the clubs. So, of course, the national team would benefit. And that's how the German national team benefited when it was an unwritten rule because you can't, if you're a part of the European Union, we're not anymore, so maybe right. you have to do that. <laughs> but they had an unwritten rule that you have to have certain amount, like for example, Barcelona have to have Catalan players in there. Yeah. Never mind Spanish. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. So they have a respect for the local community. So they have that. They don't have to. Mm. Whereas in England, when the Premier League started, we had so much money that it was more like, let's just get them Okay, in. hold on, John. Mm. We'll go now. KISS 92 traffic. If you're on the PIE heading towards the airport, look out before Upper Bukatima Road because lanes one and two are taken up by some accident vehicles. Look out for that. If you have any updates, it's double eight double five zero nine two zero. Good morning, Singapore, and welcome back to the biggest and best breakfast show in Singapore. We are The Big Show, Glenn Angel and the Flying Dutchman, and our very special guest for this morning is Liverpool legend John Barnes, who is in town uh, to tell us a little bit more about the Singapore Festival of Football happening, well, starting on the 26th of July. Tickets go on sale from the 22nd of May, is it? That's Monday, I believe. That's Monday. That's yeah, right. that's Monday. Monday, Monday yeah. at 10 a.m. And yep. it's not only the cups that are being uh, being played out here. There are also uh, training sessions that you can get to see. So Which that's going to be, be really cool. Yeah. Uh, in between the cup games. So yeah. it's going to be really nice. So there's the Tiger Cup. There's the Standard Chart at Singapore Trophy. And there's also the Singapore Trophy presented by Audi and Standard Chart. And all that happening from the 26th to the s July till the 2nd of August. All right. Nice stuff. John, you excited? Very excited, of course, and this is how much preseason has trained because you see all the interaction between the fans and the and the players now, training sessions and you know doing community development. I mean, in my day when we came to Singapore, the interaction would have been at three o'clock in the morning in Boogie Street. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose, we I know suppose the, inter were. the interaction has changed now. <laughs> yeah. um, I think we probably had more fun in my day, but you know, it's modern. Modern, you know, you have to move forward. Of course, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 Boogie yeah. Street's no fun anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's not the same. In case as you have not the same. No, no, it's not the same because I'm there this afternoon. I got oh, yeah. I got very excited when they showed me the schedule. <laughs> because the schedule is, I mean, we're going to the, the, the retail store in Boogie Street now. Like, at yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. that's right. Now, of course, because I then got it on my email and it said 2.15. I thought it was 2.15 in the morning in Boogie Street. <laughs> <laughs> I got excited, but they said it was 2.15 in the afternoon in the retail store signing some autographs. So I went, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's Boogie the reason I came, actually, because that's where I was looking forward to going at 2.15 <laughs> in the morning. It's yeah. not the same as in the yeah. 80s. I know, Absolutely I've been here not. since then. Oh, I you have, yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. Okay, so, you know, I, I think... You know, our, our listeners would like to, to find out about some of the players you played with back mm. in the day. For example, Peter Beardsley. Mm. How was he as a person? Peter, it, and it's very interesting because Peter was a model professional. You know, so Peter, um, and of course back then there was the big drinking culture and going out culture and having fun culture, but Peter was a proper professional. So Peter didn't drink alcohol. He didn't go out. So I wouldn't say he was he, he was my roommate because we both came to Liverpool at the same time. We okay. both roommate for England, so we roomed okay. together. But I wouldn't say Peter was the most popular mm. um, teammate with the others because he didn't drink and go out and carry on. Uh, so that's how football has changed so much. Peter would be a perfect player now. But in <laughs> yeah. our day, it was like, well, you, a lot of people were like, you can't trust Peter, he doesn't drink. And he doesn't <laughs> go out. And, you know, so, so that's how, you know, we... we, we Times have changed. Yeah. But Peter was perfect. I, I, I room with him, and of course, not drinking. Um, Peter would be driving. Yeah. You know? oh, which yeah. is good. Yeah, Peter would be driving. So if he needed a driver, he'd have one. So, yeah. So, no, but Peter, was a, he was a real team player. Real team player. I mean, speaking of changes, there has been so much that has changed since you played in the 80s and, and, and during your time and now. Social media, uh, not being able to drink and party like you used to get on back in the day. Mm. Uh, what kind of player do you think you would make if you were 
at your prime now? Well, you know, I always say to people, you are a product of your environment and the time you played. And what people do when they try and judge players from different eras is they look and they say, well, this was happening there. So if you magically transport yourself mm. to 2023 with the same mentality, the same physicality, you know, the same diet, nutrition from, from the 80s, would you be able to play now? But if I was playing now, it would mean that I would have been born in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. I'd been brought up in this way in terms of the, the attitude and the commitment and the professionalism that there is. Um, but what I always say is that any great player of, of of any era will be exactly the same. And of course, if you magically transport Messi and Ronaldo back to our time, they would not be the same players as they are now because, of course, they would have been with us going out and getting drunk and eating McDonald's. So, yeah. you know, right, right. Right. they wouldn't be the professionals that they are as fit and the technique and stuff like that. So, I think any great player, any great team of the past is comparable. Yeah, um, it's, it's relative to yeah. that era. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right. It is 8.16. We're with John Bonds. Kiss 92 Time Check brought to you by Putin. Fresh, crisp, and... He joined Liverpool in 1987. Was uh, Bruce Robola there already? Yeah, yeah, Bruce. Yeah. He was yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. He was oh, there. Of course, Steve McMahon was there. Steve McMahon was there for many years, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's right. right. He was, yeah. Mm. Steve yeah, Nickel was there. Steve Nickel was there. I mean, Ian Rush, they were all there. That was because they won the European Cup. Well, Heisel was two years earlier when, obviously, right. Heisel was asked, and they won the European Cup a couple of years before against mm. Roma. So all the same players were there. Ronnie Whelan, Bruce, Alan Hansen. Kenya mm. just retired. He was player manager. I... Let's talk about your 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 work with racism in football. Was it as bad back when you were playing as as it seems to be now? <laughs> well, overt racism was worse because, of course, um, you didn't get kicked out of football stadiums for throwing mm. bananas on the field and racially abusing anyone. <laughs> but I don't do work with racism in football. I do work with racism in life. Okay, okay. Because fo football is a microcosm of life, and if we right. believe we can get rid of racism in football without tackling it first in society we're mistaken and unfortunately yeah. that's okay. what we seem to be doing yeah you know yeah uh but football can do nothing to get rid of racism all football can do is govern its own house which means that for 90 minutes on a, on a saturday when you play you know you can't have racist chanting you can do whatever you want in the stadium and mm. you can have narratives around that in support of the anti-racism cause but for mm. the other five days of the week mm. what happens in society is much more important mm. Mm. Yeah. so that is where it really has to be ta tackled because before we are football fans we are members of society not the other way around right. yeah, yeah so you cannot Get rid of racism in football until you get rid of racism in society, just like sexism. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you yeah know, because true. of course now we, we, we there's a big drive for women coming into football. Yeah, and of course now you may have female players or female referees, and you know a lot of men may feel that they're supportive of it, but we know what they actually feel because of the way we've been conditioned to think in terms mm. of women's worth when it comes to football. Mm. So, um, and I'm not just football will then say you can't have any any negativity or any discrimination towards either female footballers or black players. That's just for 90 minutes. What do you do for the other six days of the week? Yeah. Mm. So, do you think? That think tackling something like uh, gender issues, sexism, ageism, uh, racism starts from the bottom up in terms of the children or from the top down? <laughs> well, of course, it's a very complex and nuanced situation because, of course, you think about trickle-down economics, which doesn't work, meaning mm. that you think you can provide a, a, a financial um, environment at the top and it trickles down down below and that has proved not to be work not to work so why do we believe that if we have a black prime minister or a black president in a bomb and a female prime minister in england and a gay prime minister in ireland that that's going to trickle down yeah so it has to start from the bottom up mm. but unfortunately it's a it's a it's a double-edged sword because if it starts from the bottom up and these young kids growing up together sees an environment which is going to discriminate against either women gay people black uh, black people they will become part of that so yeah. you have to do both so as much uh. as when kids are being brought up they say, well, we all get on together, we all like each other. But as they get older, they see that the world responds to them depending yeah. on who they are in a different and a more positive way. If you're white, if you're male, if you're straight. So therefore, it, it, it has to be both. And we're trying to simplify it by just saying, you know, we're all created equal, so let's just love each other. We have to deconstruct yeah. what we've learned labels. for hundreds of years. Yeah. You know, mm. And all people around now think that, you know, we can do it because, you know, we're now carrying this forward. But this has been a, a system for hundreds of years that we have to deconstruct. Yeah. Mm. Totally Liverpool agree. fans, if you're watching right now, if you have a question for John Barnes, please feel free. We actually have questions for John Barnes. Will England be able to win the next <laughs> European or World Cup? I thought you were going to say Eurovision Song Contest then for a second. Yeah, and which you didn't anyway. Sweden no, won. Sweden won the second that. time. No, we don't. Listen, what, all you can ask anyone to do, anyone, even Everton, <laughs> it's to maximize your potential. Yeah. Now, of course, like you asked me a question, will Liverpool finish fourth? Liverpool will maximize its potential in the next two or three matches to then win their matches. But of course, if Newcastle or Manchester United win, we can't do that. So Liverpool can maximize its potential, which means that if you are in the top 10 in the country, top four or five, you should be getting to the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and maybe the final. But 
should England win the World Cup when you have teams who are better than England? That is why France are number one or Argentina are number one. Because it, so because being English would say we should win, but of course so do France and they, they should mm. win. So all you can ask anybody to do, and what Gareth Southgate has done is to maximise the potential of the England squad to take them to the semi-final, the final, and with a bit of luck you can actually win. Um, that is why when you talk about the football, the, the, the Premier League, the best team in the country wins the Premier League, not the Champions League. Because yeah. you can be lucky to win the Champions League. You, mm-hmm. know, you can play in a game and, and be terrible and win. But the best team cannot win the, the the team who's not the best cannot win the league. You have to be that, show that consistency. So right. to win a World Cup, you, you have to be have a certain amount of luck. So yes, they can win the World Cup, but I think he's done a great job in in maximizing the potential to get them to where they've been. Mm. Mm. You know, we're all actually still scratching our heads. Mm-hmm. Why hasn't Man City won the Champions League yet? Yes, and because if for that very reason. No matter how well you play, and you hit the post twenty times, you can lose one nil and lose the Champions League. Yeah. Yeah. But they are the best team in the league, which is why they won the league. And that's where Liverpool and Man City, over the last not so much this year, but obviously in the last three or four years, where they have shown a level of consistency to get a hundred points. And you know, in the old days, we lost one game all season and two games all season, and we didn't win the league. That just shows the level of consistency mm. that those two teams have. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. But you've played many, many matches for uh, for Liverpool. But if someone were to go, John, which match sticks out for you? Which would it be? It would be the Nottingham Forest match. When Nottingham Forest, and you know, when you have young people and you tell them this, because of course they go Nottingham Forest, and they're not great. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, but they were the they were European champions. Brian Clough, they were very yeah. good, and we beat them five nil in a in a, a, a game that. People have described it as the best game ever, and that was a real team performance. I wasn't man of the match, but necessarily, but the team played well for full ninety minutes. It was just a great team performance, one of humility, which meant that you know when we're three 0 up, we didn't over elaborate, we didn't show off, we didn't make fools of them because we're beating them. It was just a proper professional performance, which means that for ninety minutes we made the right decision. So that game sticks out for me more than any any other game. Mm, okay. And of course, the Everton games when we used to beat them. <laughs> <laughs> those matches are awesome, man. Those no, matches I, I awesome. hated those matches. Yeah. Because really? they were just about aggression. You know, I like good football, and when football is playing and it's nice football mm. and it's a good game, even if the opposition are quite good. But Everton games were just like a, a, a gladiatorial battle in Rome, whereby, you know, and of course, back then, you were very physical. Yep. So they were not, if you want, for the purists who like good football, they were not the games for them. So that was not for me. <laughs> but there were, there were always teams like this in English football. I, I remember football the Leeds was, United yeah. team. They were like that as well. Yeah, that's right. Let's go yeah. on air once again. Kiss 92 traffic. On the KJE towards the PIE before the PIE Changi exit, avoid the right lane. An accident has been reported. Also on the PIE heading towards the airport before Upper Bukatima Road, also avoid lanes one and two. Another accident has been spotted. If you have anything else, it's double eight double five zero nine two zero. Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning is Liverpool legend John Barnes. You know, John, you debuted at the age of 17 at Watford. If you could tell your 17-year-old self something today, a bit of advice, what would it be? Well, I always believe that to get you to where you are, you have to go through different experiences. And... We are all looking for pe- perfection in our lives. We made, and we've all made bad decisions. I've made bad decisions. Um, but whatever decision you have made has been necessary to get to where you are today. So am I willing to go back to change something which I wasn't particularly happy with, hoping that now at my age that things would be better and because my life is fine now you have to go through these experiences? Is it very similar to when people ask me about you know, um, the highlight of my career? Mm. I said my full career of 10 years at Liverpool and 19 years as a professional footballer, the good and the bad, because that's what makes you who you are. So we could look for perfection, and of course my kids are all on you know, Instagram and do all this, you know, showing their best lives, but for most of the time, they're not like that. Yeah. So, yeah, um, of course I've made lots of mistakes, particularly you know, in the old days coming to Singapore in 2.30 <laughs> in the morning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> h- however, I, I really do believe that whatever experiences you went through are necessary to get you to where you are, so I, I, I have no regrets. And I can say things about not eating as much McDonald's because I wouldn't be the way I am now. I would have been a much fitter footballer if I didn't drink. And not that I'm a big drinker, but mm. you know, just pr- more professional. Having fun, yeah. But um, the, the balance, I think, was okay. So no, I have no regrets at all. So basically, just live your best yeah. life. And I tell you, and not only that, because I, I got good advice as a 17 year old, which is the advice I give my children now in terms of don't believe the hype about who people think you are. Mm. Because mm. if you believe the hype, and as, as you said, I debuted at 17, I'm playing for England at 19. And if I was to believe what people are telling me, I would have been the greatest person in the whole world. Mm. Whereas I'm just a normal human being who happens to be a decent footballer. So if I then started to act that way when I'm not playing football, because unfortunately what happens in fo- for a lot of 
celebrities, people who then, you know, when they finish, they struggle with mental health issues because when you are doing what you do and people tell you they love you, when you're not doing it anymore, they love somebody else. For and then sure. You, and, yeah. then you, and you struggle with that because I thought you loved me. But when I was 17 years old playing for Watford, I saw the way that all Watford players would come back and he saw that nobody really wanted to know them. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that could be me. you know, mm. And it's understandable because, of course, it's about who's playing now. So I have no issue that, you know, every now and again, if that people may not recognize me if I go to the stadium and stuff like that, whereas a lot of people can't handle that. So be a normal person. Don't separate who you are from what you are. And what I was was a footballer who may be a bit of a celebrity and a footballer, but who I am and who I always was was just a normal father, friend, normal person who can just go and act normally. I like that. Don't believe the hype. Yeah. yeah. Um, You're also a damn good rapper, I have to say. Oh, yes. my goodness. Oh, yes. Yes. Good. yes. We do have no, this. No, 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 no. Wait, I think it, what you should it, say is I'm a, I'm a rapper who is a damn good footballer. <laughs> oh, okay. You're an all-rounded rapper footballer. I was a rapper before the football. We, we actually managed to dig into the archives and find some video clips of you. So we're going to be doing that on the Big Show TV. So if you want to join us and watch uh, John Barnes rap, you can head to our Facebook and YouTube channel slash Kiss92FM. All right. It's Wednesday, the 17th of May. Kiss 92 Date Check brought to you by Gain City Megastore at Sungai Kadut. It was, it was. You're, talking about, about you're talking about you're talking about the new order one or the or the uh, anth- uh, the Anfield rap. It wasn't the new order one. It was the John Barnes one. No, no. There there you go. Go. Okay. All right, check it out. This is the uh, Anfield rap. That's the Anfield rap. That was more fun because you can tell we were we we're a bit drunk then, weren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh, look at those moves. <laughs> <laughs> we all got a bit of rhythm. Anyway. I'm sure you still have those chains, right? <laughs> there, there is the other one, but this one, as you said, hit number one. This was by New Order. Oh, this, this is wicked. That was from the 1990 World Cup. A New Order, a great group, and that's why it got to number one because uh-huh. a New Order. <laughs> 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 Is this a 12 inch version? You can cut it. Now. <laughs> Are you trying to fill time in? Yeah. Interestingly, what that, were you that saying, was um, yeah. interestingly the um that that there wasn't supposed to be, as you well know, New Order aren't a rap group. So there wasn't supposed to be a rap in the song. But when the song was finished, yeah. and you know the song is about the World Cup. And yeah. So you just yeah. showed the rap there, but the song was yeah. New Order. And then that was Keith Allen in the background, Lily Allen's dad. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, and then, yes. Of course, there was a little bit of alcohol involved in the studio. <laughs> so in a drunken studio, Keith Allen said, why don't we put a rap in the song? There wasn't supposed to be a rap. Oh. So we, we he wow. wrote the rap. The song was On finished. On the spot, he right, wrote okay. The, rap. the song was finished. Yep. And then... There were only six of us there doing this England song. There was me, Paul Gascoigne, Peter Bear, Chris Waddle, Des Walker, Steve McMahon. So we had to have a rap off. So everybody had to have a go at the rap. Yeah. Oh, wow. And of course, because if you, I told you the other people, if you've heard Gazza speak, never mind rap. <laughs> <laughs> and interestingly, I wish I had my phone with me. Nobody could understand it. I wish it. I had the phone because six months ago, I was working in Leicester and the, the sound engineer who was working after soon in the event said his dad was the sound engineer when we did the rap and he has got a copy of everyone <gasps> doing the rap. And I had it on oh. my phone. <laughs> and I could have played you Paul Gascoigne's attempt and Peter Beard's attempt at the rap, which then meant you could see why I got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll send it. Uh-huh. Wow. It was the worst Please thing you'll ever hear. And it went on to be known as the England New Order. I mean, it wasn't yeah, just listen, New I Order. Thought, listen, 1990 was a special World Cup. England got to the yeah, semi-final. It yeah. was like, yeah. you know, uh, celebrities, football started to come in and stuff like that. So, so I felt a bit sorry for New Order because people, you know, it's called the England song where it <laughs> yeah, was really them, their song. and we just had to turn up to do a bit of rapping. And because we did well in the World Cup, then it became the England song. But they, they got all the money, so it's fine. Oh, you didn't get any <laughs> of that. Get, we may get the credit, but they got the money. Yeah. Well, I think you got a couple of cents from well, this tell, one that we played. No, now. But I'll tell you, it's only a couple of cents because I'll tell you what happened was, and this is how footballers have changed with their agents because, of mm. course, we didn't know it was going to be New Order. We knew there's a World Cup song, and we've done songs before which weren't great. We did a it album, wasn't a big deal. We did an '86. We did an album which obviously got to number ninety. <laughs> so, of course, when the 1990 World Cup came along, and this was before we knew this song was going to be New Order, the agent came to us and he said, right, we're going to do a song. We didn't know it was going to be New Order. This is before the song came out. This is six months earlier. He said, you've got a choice. He goes, you can either 
go for royalties in the song, mm. or you can get five thousand pounds to share between the twenty-five of you. Oh. <laughs> and then the committee got together and they said, "Does it mean if we don't sell any records, we make no money if we go for royalties?" Yeah. And they said, "We'll take the five thousand pounds." Oh. oh wow! Oopsie. So um, that's not going to meet that twenty-five. No, cents no that's a, you're not getting <laughs> any of that. Oh, that's all right. You're here with us this morning. But you know, I mean, speaking of England and all that, seventy-nine caps for mm. England. Are you guessing? No, uh, it's a you know, fact. Yeah, I can Maybe, tell you never told you, I can tell you never told because when you work in, in the media, as you know, research is very important, so you speak with authority. <laughs> <laughs> so you should have said, 79 caps. But being an Evertonian, you're question. not really sure. You're kind of like 79, 79 caps. It's like well. overwhelmed it was this a good guess. <laughs> well, it was a good guess, and you're right. W- Wikipedia says it's 79 as well. Yeah. <laughs> so it must be right. 79 caps. Would you have played for Everton? <laughs> boss, boss. Oh, like the Liverpool truth, fan here says no. We could have gotten him. <laughs> Who was that? Howard Kendall. You, you could have gotten him, but he may not have done so well. well no, no. You... Well, what, what was no. that? What do you think? John Burns. You said it's all relative. Is that you the said it's all relative, right? Okay, going back on him. Going back on him. Justin Timberlake featuring T.I., My Love, right here on KISS 92. All the great songs in one place. Our guest for this morning is Liverpool legend John Barnes. What a pleasure to have you in the studio, John. Thank you. And you asked me if I would have played for Everton, and I, I didn't know how to respond, but now I've had a couple of seconds to think. I'll say that I am available now. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I could get in the team. I'm uh, they they need you now. 59 years old, 95 kilos. <laughs> I think I could... I could probably get an Everton uh, team. Yeah, oh yeah you God. probably could. They, they need you so badly. In, man. We yeah. need you. Yeah. <laughs> we need to beat Wolves. We've got a question on our Facebook page, John. Um, it goes like this. Liverpool fans are notoriously l- loyal and close-knit. In your opinion, what makes Liverpool Liverpool? What makes Liverpool Liverpool are the people. And I have to pay special reference to the Everton as well, because they are Liverpudlians. Mm. And Liverpudlians are, uh, 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 I don't know if you have a, in lots of countries you have an area where they say these people are special, and you can take that <laughs> as, you, as, you, as you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Scousers are special, which means a very positive thing for people from Liverpool, but if you're from London or Manchester, it means something else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Liverpool is a socialist city, which means that they, they, they are invested in, in their working classness. Mm. And football right. was a working class sport, so therefore the football club, which started from the working classes, still have to have, of course, now in 2023, it's far from that kind of an environment, but they still have to have a respect for that philosophy of Liverpool being a family. It's not about the high, highest of the highs, not about the superstar players, it's also about the family, which is also about the people who support Liverpool, not just in the city, mm. not just in England, but all over the world. Mm. So therefore, if you look at players who come to play for Liverpool, they have to have a respect and a reverence for for Liverpool and for the people who are yeah. part of it, which is which is everyone in the world. So I suppose um, other clubs may not be that way. And Everton is similar, I must admit. Everton is also very similar. So I think it's the people of Liverpool, mm. even the Evertonians. Mm. Nice. Okay. So, uh, so nice. inclusive. <laughs> of course, we're speaking to John Barnes, who is here to speak about the Festival of Football Driven by Comfort Del Grozig. Uh, that is happening from the 26th of July to the 2nd of August. Five big European clubs coming and descending upon the national stadium. There's Bayern Munich, there's Roma, there's Leicester, there's Tottenham Hotspur, and there's, of, of course, Liverpool. You can get your tickets at Ticketek starting Monday at 10 a.m. So once again, the Tiger Cup will be played between Spurs and Roma on the 26th of July. The St- Chart Trophy between Liverpool and Leicester on the 30th of July and the Singapore Trophy uh, presented by Audi and Standard Chartered between Liverpool and Bayern Munich. That'll be on the 2nd of August. So much. This is the first time something like this is happening over across a whole week and yeah. I think it's going to be very exciting for fans. Whether or not their favourite teams come, it's going to be a very, very exciting week. Tell you what's exciting. John mm-hmm. Barnes is in town. Yeah, John Barnes <laughs> is exciting. <laughs> we love yeah, having you here in good. the studio. Even this time in the morning. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you said you don't sleep, so it doesn't you make know, a difference I think, anyway. I think the difference between this and other, other, because of course, all of those teams have been coming to this part of the world um, for many, many years, but not all playing at the same time. Mm. You know, so every mm. now and again, like last year, Liverpool stopped off for a day, and I'm sure, you know, even Real Madrid and teams, but to have a festival whereby having these teams over a week period is, is fantastic. And I love that it's a it's a variation. You know, you've got a German team, you've got an yeah. Italian team, you've got like you've a got mini World Cup. Of, yeah, like a mini World Cup. What used to happen? Um, oh yeah. 
is, and we've played in them before even in my time, is you would also have a local team taking part. They don't yeah. seem to have that anymore. Right, which is a yeah, bit of a shame, no, that's okay. We're but they always had a local time. team <laughs> playing part. But yeah. I suppose when we were here, the local team would be able to compete with us because, you know, we weren't particularly sober going onto the pitch. Whereas I suppose <laughs> local teams playing now would be very difficult for yeah. them. It, it would be. be. Yeah. John, you, you've, you're a prof- professional footballer, coach, author, pundit, rapper, father, father, rapper, whatever. Okay, um, just one, one, one really quick one. Okay, um, every second Charlie out there has got a podcast and he thinks he's a football pundit. Yeah, what tips would you give them a to be halfway? Pundit. Yeah, to be halfway to decent. Well, you know, because I'm, um, I'm a little bit traditionalist and an old school, so I don't understand modern modern life because my kids are on all of these podcasts devices. and the devices mm. and stuff like that. So I give them no advice at all because I, I really thought you had to little, probably know a bit about football to talk about it. Yeah, mm. Apparently not. No. So <laughs> no. I can't give them advice at all because, you know, as long as you've got a following and you, yep. and you, and you know how to sell yourself, you can talk the biggest load of rubbish ever and you'll be very successful. <laughs> and you can read a script so, and exactly. say it really confidently, yeah, so you're I'm done. Not, um, yeah. I can't advise people okay. uh, about what to do. That's a good perspective, actually. <laughs> but speak with confidence. Exactly. Speak with confidence. Yeah. You've got to. Look at Donald Trump. And look at, I mean, look at what Glenn said <laughs> about you know, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79, 79 caps. caps. Yeah. 79 caps. Yeah. Say it not, confidently. Not, not Mr. John so 79 caps. Is it? No. Is it? <laughs> He's teaching you how to be a radio might be 81. presenter now. Yeah. Hold on, no. Don't say it might be 81. Say it's 81. <laughs> <laughs> it's 79. It's John Bonds. Thank you very much, John, for joining us this morning. It's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much.